this this concept is derived from the idea of a customer that is producing approximately 500 cabinets up to 500 cabinets per shift and this is what we would consider more of a, a higher automation type of a system it's not fully automated but it is uh, on, the, on the end of higher automation trying to reduce labor uh, material handling of course and and working that all the way down through with you know all of our part identification and labeling and, and working that down through the system so that we have you know the most autonomous system we can have in this in, in this scenario so for this particular customer we've we've paired up them with a you know an mes software in order to make sure that each and every machine is, is working in conjunction with each other and making sure that we're talking back and forth to the office so that not only are we working individual machines but we're, we're working the entire process all the way through it's pretty powerful you're you know from the saw all the way through banding processing drilling doweling and and the case clamp and then into the packaging all working within one proprietary software interface you know when we talked about a, a high volume system we need to realize that we're not talking about making 500 of the same part in this system right. this system is designed to be completely flexible all these storage positions have different materials with different decor and finishes on there um the eight this we're talking about 500 different cabinets going through a system like this mm -hmm. not not 500 of the same so for now we just want to dive right into the storage system side of things where all this starts right and in the last segment we talked about how we kind of come to the sizing of a storage system we talked about the growth aspect of why we would choose a storage system and one other key thing i wanted to mention about a storage system that plays really big into the roi scenario of a storage system typically when we have saws involved not necessarily cnc but saws involved in a storage system is uh is that off cut management piece it's become a regular part of our conversations uh every day every week um many many plants we can walk through plants and we st see stacks and stacks of off cut pieces uh placed against the wall and the intentions are great uh but what happens is is we can't uh you know, usually twice a year, they do a big purge, they throw all these things out and the intentions were good, but the fact that we can't measure it and track it and use it makes it quite cumbersome. So what off, with that off cut management, being able to store off cuts in the storage system and be able to store off cuts outside the storage system, what does it when we produce that off cut, then, then we uh, populate or update the uh, stock control. So we know all the panels, full size panels, but now we know the offcuts also. So then when they send the next job down, when they send the next job down, then they're able to um, use the full panels. Plus they need to be, need to use three or four offcuts and in order to complete the job rather than wasting full sheets, for example. Our customers historically have achieved about a two, on average, two to eight or 10% increase in offcut yield. And that's, and that's a huge, that's a huge increase in offcut yields considering the cost of material, right? I mean, sometimes our, our customers have $30 material and other times we've seen material $200 per sheet, right? And so you, you look at a two to 10% offcut yield increase, you can start finding an ROI very quickly for a storage system. With that, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the saws, but I'm not the saw expert. So uh, David, if you'll talk a little bit more about the, the HPS and everything as to why we chose that in this particular scenario well you're going to notice here in this layout uh here we use a it's called a b320 flex tech and this is our our autonomous machine it's a robotic machine it's fed from the store tech and um it delivers panels onto the back of the machine here now the robot handles all the movements so in feed from the store tech we rip our strips we drop our waste we, the waste goes out to a chopper to go into a hopper to get rid of. Uh, once it's ripped, the robot turns around and puts the strips in the long direction on the strip buffer area. And then the strips are transferred in individually. They're ripped um, and they're able to, be, they're cross cut. And then they come out on the out feet of the saw. Now we print labels. So on this, because this machine has a conveyor and de-stacking positions, 
um, we print a label so when we, when the blade passes through the saw making the cut, the pressure beam printer puts a label on the parts so that that part now goes on the Alfie conveyor or we can designate that 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 part may be an off cut or that part may be a long strip for a closet line, for example. So what we can do is is the common parts to go through the main production line can come down the conveyor system and the unique parts, the off cuts can come can be destacked onto these destacking positions right here. Definitely a very versatile solution, especially this really uh, when we're talking about 1600 to 2200 parts per shift. Um, and all of a sudden now we have a pair of these running. Uh, that's quite a bit of production coming through here. It's really key because it's very consistent, right? Typically, when our standard panel saws, they're very fat. The operators are fast in the morning. Everybody's energetic, and they're moving faster, and then they slow down after lunch, and they get slower towards the day. And a lot of it's ergonomics, how worn they are, and this gets rid of that wear uh, on the operators. And the other thing is, too, is, you know, it's very difficult, you know, across the nation trying to find qualified employees to run machinery like this to to have that certain level of thinking and awareness to be to truly operate a machine to where now your employees can focus on adding value to the product we can cut the rectangles and squares on the beam saws automatically and when it takes more thinking uh more attention to detail now we can use those persons uh in the in the production area uh, so this is our new uh, 512. Uh, so we're just introducing this to the market. Uh, what's neat about these is it can be both right hand feed and or left hand. So typically uh, we have left hand in this range, but we're offering it in right hand as well. So depending on uh, the customer's flow and just being flexible uh, with you know any position we need to put this machine. Um, it's going to be two coil as standard. We can have uh, EVA PUR as standard, but we can also add AirTech to this as well. So the 6.6 .6 range that we were just talking about would range from 14 to 20 meters, depending on if you're running corner round. Here, we're gonna run 20 meters constantly. Um, neat too, on the end trims, typically you have about uh, 25 millimeters on the front end and the back end. Here with the precision of our snipping or end trim units, we can get within two millimeters. Um, the profile scraper in the last cell, we talked about having two profiles, two different radiuses. Here we have five. So that's allowing us to have a little bit more flexibility. One of the features I think is really neat about this is a, the remote, a little control, handheld control. And as you are setting up the machine for the first time, or you're just checking in on the, the different radiuses, you can actually stop the feed track. The machine is still running and you can go and check, make sure that we're actually doing with what it's supposed to be doing before you actually continue the part on. Uh, these are also equipped with the LoopTech 300s, same as the cell that we just spoke about. Uh, so being able to run the, um, you know, the 500 cabinets that we're trying to, to get out of this at about 17 parts per minute, uh, having three of these uh, we'll be able to keep up with the production demands. This is true high volume, high velocity cut band bore style machining, right? High volume production. Um, we've talked a lot today about zero setup. We've talked a lot about batch one and just in time manufacturing. And even at these volumes, those principles hold true, right? They're still important, it's still possible. So as we come out of the saws, right, the cut through the banders, obviously the band, now we're into the boring portion of this production line. And based upon those volumes that both David and Terry are putting through the edge banders, we're looking to scale, right, both flexible and high speed drilling solutions to match. Um, we'll, do, we'll do so here as David has zoomed in. These are a pair of Drilltech H600 machines right? High volume, zero setup, uh, batch one processing machines with velocity. So there are some cool features to these machines, uh, automated in feeds, automated out feeds, um, obviously paired with, with automated processing. 
These machines have the ability to cycle two parts per cycle. So if we're thinking a cabinet left and a right, those can, can go through the machine in a single movement or a single cycle. The key here is not, not just speed, but it's also flexibility, right? It's a fully functioning machining center, uh, able to process vertical and horizontal drills, um, vertical routings, groovings, and through a, a, a very wide range of panel sizes. So we're not limiting you in what you can put through the machines. Basically, if it comes to the saw, it's, it, you're likely um, coming through this machine as well. As we take those parts, we move them in volume through uh, the H600 machines. Uh, this, is, uh, this particular layout is focused on uh, dowel construction. Here we are moving into a little bit larger platform on the drill and dowel. So it brings in a little bit more flexibility, brings in some overflow type vertical drilling for the H600s um, upline from the machines. Um, in here, you're not just, uh, right, not just horizontal work. Uh, you can do some vertical drillings on your panel work, or if you're doing door and drawer type processing, that vertical drilling capability within a single setup on a drill and dial machine uh, can be pretty powerful. All the way up to this point, you know, we've gone through, you know, the storage system to the saws, to the edge banders, to the drilling and doweling. And now here we are to, you know, the case clamping portion. The office knows exactly where this job is at in process. And, and now here we are at the case clamp. So this, this is our CabTech T200 and the T stands for through feed. I think in the last segment that we talked about, we talked about the stationary case clamp and this is our through feed case clamp. This is a this is our high higher highly automated case clamp that that allows us to back off of, of our manual functionality. It allows us to put the put the 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 box together to put the cabinet together here at this assembly station here, and and through barcode scanning, move it through the case clamp. The case clamp automatically adjusts based on the barcode and and what size the box is, and clamps it for either 90 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever the customer decides on what they're comfortable with before moving it down the line. But what I wanted to point out that's pretty cool with these with these uh, systems is how customizable they are. You know, our standards, our standard systems have a, a simple in feed station that goes through the case clamp and out to a standard out feed. What we've done here, this was uh, this was actually taken from a uh, customer's layout, I've, I've modified it a little bit, but basically what we have here is a, a customized pneumatic assembly table for a couple of our operators to sit here, assemble our boxes, and then through foot pedal, pop that up, drive it onto our conveyor, and again, scan it before moving into the case clamp automatically and moving automatically out. So then after it gets out of the, out of the case clamp, I imagine a lot of our customers uh, because we've had a lot of these conversations, they have to figure out some way if they have a tall cabinet. Okay, how do we how do we lift it up, right? Do we break our backs trying to lift that lift that cabinet up and, and stand it up so we can, you know, assemble all of our fixtures, or do we do something like this where we get it out of the clamp and we have an automatic tilt up device before it moves down the line? And this is this is a pretty cool feature. Again, talking ergonomics and, and trying to make for a safe work environment. And lastly, as it comes out of the case clamp, one not new machine, but uh, but newer to this particular market for for styles is our Pack Tech. And Pack Tech is, is simply it's can be cardboard cutting, cardboard folding. In in this case, we're we're demonstrating a cardboard cutting device, right? So what we've got here is essentially a stack of cardboard that's not folded, not cut, just raw cardboard with no pattern in mind, right? And as the operator is, is sitting there at the at the end feet of this cardboard cutting device, they can do a few different things. They can either manually input the size of, of the box that they want to cut. They can put it into a production list. They can scan, you know, the, the part the part barcode, whatever the case might be, however they want to do it. Uh, imagining that we're in an MES scenario here, we're going to want to be as automated as, as possible. So we are going to have a situation here where we're going to move this through in an automated fashion. Some things that are important here are scalability, right? So if you, 
if you look at kind of how the, the saws were set up there, I'm not sure that any of us are saying, you know, we're buying this giant store tech and we're buying two robot saws within an initial purchase, right? Um, start where you are and configure the systems to, to, to grow with you.